So the idea of this video is not only are we going to be applying joint controlled morphs, but we're not going to be creating those morphs or the deformations within Modo. We're going to be creating within ZBrush where we've got even more sculpting control over the deformations. So there's a certain process that we have to go through, hence why I'm making this video. So I've already got this arm here and I've added some bones to it. And I've already just done a couple of keyframes here, just so that on keyframe 20, it's fully posed, in which I'm going to export this model. Now, to export the model um, for use in ZBrush, we need to freeze the mesh so that it actually exports it in its posed state. Otherwise, it won't do that. But before we do that, we need to make sure that it's in a zero state first and that we export this state as it is now. Obviously, for the fact that you've brought it in to Modo, you've already got a copy of this. So you can use this as its initial state. So I'm going to move on now to um, keyframe number 20, where I've got it fully posed where I want it for the bicep bulge. And in this particular case, I want to make sure that I've got no smoothing applied. And then I want to go to geometry and then choose freeze. We can leave freeze displacement, freeze deformation, that's fine. And now when we export this, we're actually going to be able to use this in its post state. You want to make sure that you undo this after you do this, Control Z, so there's no freeze state applied anymore. By compressing Control Z a couple of times, you'll notice that the smoothness comes back on, so you know that you're back to the state again, where it needs to be. So now we're going to hop over into ZBrush. Now when a morph is applied within Modo, what it does is it actually compares it against the static original pose, the zero position. So we need to make sure that any deformations that we make within ZBrush always reverts to or adds to in addition to the zero position of the um, arm in this particular case. This means that we can't simply export the posed arm we need to make sure that the arm has got the deformations in place, but not the pose. Otherwise, it will apply what's known as a double deformation, which basically means it's going to transform the rotation twice, and it's going to completely screw up your mesh. So what we need to do is we need to work with layers within ZBrush. So first of all, we bring in our default static pose. So this is the state that it is exactly within Modo. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a new layer for this. So we create a new layer. It's in record mode. And then we import a posed version, which is automatically going to be putting it into this layer. Now what you can do is you can turn off this and you can switch between the pose version and the static image and that's very important that we actually going to be able to do this so turning this back on again we need to make a brand new layer this is the layer in which we're going to be applying our deformations so I'm not going to do much here I'm nothing fancy I'm just going to do some basic deformations so that we can see exactly what's happening so just use the move tool as an example and just get a bicep pose Once you've got the bicep posed as you want, or any muscle that you're working on, we next need to apply or keep this transformation, but revert back to the zero position of the rotation of the arm. So we just simply turn this off. So we've turned the layer off that holds the pose, but it's remained to keep the actual geometry change for the um, pose itself. So it's kept the bulge there. It's added it in addition to the default pose that is in Modo at the moment. So now that we've got this, we export this model back out. We can save this as a new name convention like Bicep Posed. Back into Modo now, we're going to create a morph for this. So we're going to select the mesh, go to list, brand new morph, 
I'm just going to call this bicep. Right click where it says relative morph and select add morph influence. In the properties for that morph influence, we need to make sure that we've got use local transform. And then we import our posed model. With that post model imported, we now with the morph influence still selected, go to the vertex map and background morph tool. Just click once in the scene there. And now we can go and delete this arm curl pose. We no longer need this. And we've got the morph applied. The next thing we need to do is we need to actually link the rotation of the uh, forearm in this particular case to affect the strength of the morph. So to do this, we need to first make sure that we've got the morph influence selected. We go to the setup tab here and in modifiers, we've got channel links. Just click on this. Because we've already selected the morph influence prior to doing this, it's automatically loaded it into the driven. If it hasn't, you can select this and then click on load driven. The next one we need to select is the driver, the actual bone that's going to drive this morph, which is the forearm. If we just go to rotate, we can see in this particular case that it's on the Y axis or rotation that we're going to be wanting to drive. So with this selected, we click on load driver and we need to make sure that we select the right one here in its rotation on Y. And into the other box here, the driven, we select strength. Select relationship and then add link. If you've already got some keyframes added down, it will just state that there is some animated keyframes and it may uh, adjust the channels of your animation or effects. Just click OK. We can close this down now. Now we run through the animation, you'll see that the morph deform is applied. And if we look anywhere else within here, nothing else has been affected just those vertices that have made this change. And of course you can go ahead and continue to do this as an example where you can fully extend the arm in a different pose. Let's say, let's say 40. We will just really lock it right out there like that. And then we can export this pose after freezing it. Do the same procedure within ZBrush, bring it back in, and then you'll have what looks to be the tricep bulging out the back. Now what you can do is you can actually add additional steps or keyframes to smooth out the um, motion of these deformers. Now as an example, okay, I'm just going to put this on frame 20, and we're going to open up this Morph Influence. And you notice that we've got the relationship that we've just made using the channel links. When you select this, it will appear on the screen. If it doesn't, just press the space bar and it will appear. You notice now that we've got this rotation for the driver and the strength at 100%. This is basically saying when the rotation of the forearm is reached minus 85 degrees, apply 100% of this strength. But what about if we wanted to have more control? This has simply got two points at the moment, which is fine for most cases. So when we click on the steps here, we can see the two steps that it's applying it. One, two. What about if we wanted a step in between? Well, to do this, we click on the graph editor, and then we see the graph here, and you can see the two points. One is at zero position, where zero effect has been applied, and the other one is at 85 degrees. So we've got the degrees at the bottom here and then we've got the value by which is affecting. So we've got 100% value up here and zero value down here according to the joint rotation. If you're not happy with the joint rotation, you can modify it within here. As an example, you can say, I want the joint to be a bit more bent when it applies that 100%. So what we do is we just simply move this to say 90 degrees. Now when we apply this, you can see now that the joint is bent even more now.
Now I'm just going to move this back to 85. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add another keyframe. Just simply middle click and I'll add a keyframe right in the middle there. And I'm going to change its value. I'm going to do something quite obscure here so we can really see the difference. Let's maybe drive it right up there. So what's going to happen now is, is at zero position we've got zero strength of the morph applied. When it gets to 40 degrees, minus 40 degrees, it's going to apply something ridiculous like 145% um, or strength of this morph. And then it's going to go down to 100%. And let's have a look and see what happens here. So it's bulging up and then it's coming down at the end here. And this is because we've got this third step. And also you'll notice that these steps are updated within here as well. So you can see all these different steps. Now you can imagine the power of this because it may not be always appropriate to have the morph to switch on and off. Especially when you've got issues with, say, um, it applied in a very small range of motion, like the tricep, for instance. If the tricep is going to be applied just between there and there, it may appear that the tricep is just popping out. By using the graph editor, you can smooth this off so that the tricep starts to deform at an earlier stage. And then on that last couple of degrees, or maybe 20 degrees, it really does start to pop out. So I hope you found this um, informative and I hope this helps and I'm sure there's even easier ways than some of the things that I've been doing. Um, but there you go. This is how we can actually use joint controlled morphs between ZBrush and Modo 601.